He has been called the David Bowie of contemporary theater, which I think is a great phrase, although she's really the Carol Churchill of contemporary theater. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to Theater Thursday. This month, we will be talking about Top Girls by Carol Churchill. Clarence Brown Theater did this production in the lab in the spring of 2017. My name is Gracie Belt and I had the pleasure of playing Angie in this production. I graduated from the University of Tennessee in 2018. We are coming to you from Knoxville, Tennessee, the native lands of the Yuchi, the Muscogee Creek, and the Cherokee Nations. I'm joined today by Casey and Carrie. Hello and welcome. Hi. Hello. Casey, can you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Casey Sams. I'm on the faculty of the theater department. I'm the associate chair, associate head of the department. And I was the director for this production of Top Girls. My name is Carrie Considine. Um, I completed my master's degree and my PhD uh, at the University of Tennessee. And I was the production dramaturg for this production of Top Girls. Mm -hmm. So Carrie, as I understand it, you are basically an expert on Carol Churchill. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us about who Carol Churchill is and your relationship? Sure, I, I certainly a lifelong fan at any rate. Um, <laughs> So Carol Churchill is, is an amazing playwright and my favorite playwright. Um, she has been called the David Bowie of contemporary theater, which I think is a great phrase, although she's really the Carol Churchill of contemporary theater. Um, she's just made so many innovations and she's constantly been experimenting with form and style. She's been writing since the late 1950s, 1960s, and she's written over something like 60 plays um, and they're so different. Um, she had early on a play called Serious Money that was about the stock market written in rhyming couplets. And more recently, a play called Love and Information that's actually 50 micro plays with a cast of over 100. I mean, just very different kinds of language, very different styles in her theater. And she's always experimenting. Um, and her plays tend to be about power and identity and how these things work in society and, um, just a, an amazing playwright. So in this particular play, Top Girls, this first scene is like a very complicated, very fantastical scene. We're at a dinner table. There's all these things happening. And it's kind of a bear of a scene. Casey, <laughs> as the director, um, what was your first impression? What were the challenges? And how did you end up doing it? I love this scene so much. It's amazing. So Marlene is our main character in the play. And uh, in this first act, Marlene is hosting a dinner party to celebrate her promotion at work. And she's invited women from throughout history. Some are actual historical characters, some are, are fictional characters. And she's brought them all together to celebrate her success. And all of these women are coming in with their own stories and their own background and, and having these very complicated overlapping conversations about um, romance and families and fathers and bearing children. And as they're having this dinner party, they're drinking more and more and they're getting drunker and the conversations are sort of piling on top of one another. And it's, it's this amazingly complicated structure that is within it holding these, these really kind of central ideas about a woman's role in, in society and how she understands herself, all in the guise of celebrating Marlene's professional uh, elevation at work, her promotion. So, so it's, a, uh, it's an amazing piece of theater that has its own kind of rhythm and music to it. Um, it it's, it's, it, it's just a spectacular, adventure to go through. 
It totally, totally is. Um, speaking, okay, so we have all these historical characters and the historical context of the show itself. Um, Carrie, I remember you built basically a Wikipedia page for the actors. Um, can, like, what, does, does a dramaturg always build a Wikipedia page? Like, what does a dramaturg do? <laughs> Yeah, so I was a production dramaturg, and there are different types of dramaturgs, but for a production mm -hmm. dramaturg, you're going to work from the very beginning when you're choosing a play and deciding on rights with the director, the designers, the actors, and then post-production, you're going to write production notes, you might do community talkbacks, that kind of thing. But for the cast part of it, I did, I built a website and it had information on all of these different historical characters. And that was fun because you could have links to actually see, you know, you could read Patient Griselda's story by Chaucer and you could see the picture of Dolgret and those kinds of things. Um, so making sure that I have all of these resources to provide. And there were actors who, um, got really into some of that context. So I spent a lot of time with Meg Sutherland talking about the 1980s. You know, we talked about the different, like where were computers in the 1980s? Spoiler, not very far along, right? Um, so, you know, those kinds of things were what we would, what we would go through. And you have some actors that really want all of the detail. They're really going to get into the, the historical, you know, um, component and they want everything just right. And some actors that need less of that, that's just their process. So it depends on the actor, how I would work, but I'm basically there to be a resource for the team. I, I remember your stack of books on the table, like we get higher and higher every day. <laughs> oh, and I, I brought some. I have them back here. You know I do. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, OK, so speaking of education and students, um, Casey, this is such a broad question, but like, can you can you describe the educational opportunities for both the undergraduate and the graduate students in this production of Top Girls? Sure. Um, well, uh, Carol, Carol Churchill is a master of language. She's a brilliant playwright. So that we're always looking for plays with meat, with heft, with interesting language choices for students to work on. And, and we just happen to know that we had a, a particularly exciting group of undergraduate women actors. Um, so we were looking for a piece that would be uh, good for them. And then uh, also in that same season, we were doing a production of Busy Body, which uh, is a restoration play, but as by another female playwright. So, so that really brought Carol Churchill to mind that we wanted to have an uh, opportunity to sort of highlight female playwrights as well as uh, uh, female actors in this particular piece. So, so that was one of the things that we were thinking about as we um, as we worked on this play and kind of delved into all of these different characters and all of the different problems that happened over the play, the, 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 the actors uh, in the room really rose to the challenge. Like it was an amazing ensemble group. They really supported one another and worked well with one another and listened to one another. And uh, I'm, I remember a, a day in rehearsal where uh, we finished a run of the play and and it, and it just went really well. It kind of accomplished everything that I thought it was supposed to accomplish and everybody was sort of uh, hitting their marks and do, doing their work. And so we finished the run and we gave all of our notes. And then I, I remember turning to everybody and going, okay, so we know now that we can do this. We've, we've got the show, we've got a handle on it. What happens now if we just, um, play, take the next couple of rehearsals to just play around and see what else is there. And um, everybody kind of looked at me like, okay, <laughs> I think that's what we ought to do. Uh, but they, they, they just grabbed that idea and, and ran with it. And that's, that's kind of where we lived for the whole rest of the run of the show is that, um, is that rather than doing the thing that you knew would work, all of the actors would enter into the space kind of open and listening and ready and aware to try something new. And that's like the goal of educational theater. That's what we're aiming for is, that's what we're aiming for all the time in theater is to not just perform something that we figured out before, but to really sort of live 
moment to moment in the in the problems and the situations that are evolving in front of you. And uh, and this production was a chance to really see a group of uh, young, thoughtful um, actors just grab onto that idea and run with it. I I I I didn't know before this that um, that it was it was possible with people who were still kind of so fresh in their craft and it really <laughs> it's it's impacted the way I've I've worked with and directed undergraduate students ever since it was an amazing time. I, I remember that so vividly, Casey. Like your Casey's work and Carrie's work gave us that foundation and that safety net where we worked hard. There was so much table work. There was a lot of like fretting about details and 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 as like as there should be because you want to do it right and you want to honor this great text. But then when that moment we flipped into like, okay, what happens if we just are led by our pleasure and are led by impulse and like I just see like my my sister, my my partner in this scene, like I've got you girl. And <laughs> and it, it was just it truly was such an incredible experience as a student and as an actor. I I it's rare when you get those opportunities and I'm I'm so grateful for that. Uh -huh. So Carrie, as as we kind of wrap this up, I yes, there's such an opportunity for students um with with this production specifically but i w can you talk about the programming of top girls and that season that it was in how that might open a conversation for the audience's benefit sure um you know top girl and Car top girls and carol churchill specifically are great for this but we did a a community event back um in 2017 that was called top girls and busybody spotlight on women's issues and we did it in conjunction with the uh, Commission for Women. And we brought in both mm -hmm. of the casts from Top Girls and Susanna Sant Leaves, The Busy Body. And we had faculty members from different departments in the university um, who came in and a working playwright who came in to sit on a panel and watch some scenes and talk through these shows and women's issues at this moment. Um, and we had an audience discussion. And it was really fantastic to have all of these different people in the room with all of these different perspectives. You had undergraduates, you had graduates, you had professors, you had community members, um, everybody who's really sitting with this issue in their current time. But then also, obviously, this is an issue that has historical roots, much like Marlene's dinner party, right? We're, we're still contending with our past in some kind of way, which is one of the things that Carol Churchill just does so beautifully. She has these plays that consider the, the social political structure, the cultural structure of the world, but then also you have real humans telling real human stories. They're very personal stories and they generate so much discussion and so much, um, so many different perspectives and ways to look at an issue. And this is why I think her work is, is so important and work like this is so important. Y'all, I could talk about Top Girls all day long <laughs> you know this is absolutely true um i hate to say it but we gotta say goodbye thank you ladies so much for joining us today oh, thank, thank you, you Gracie. and thank you listener for tuning in to another beautiful theater thursday join us for the rest of the month as we continue to have conversations about top girls